Um, I, I think the most important part of what we saw today was number one, we closed. This is the cl high, cl lowest close in this whole formation here. And the most disturbing thing, if you are a bull. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, happy Monday everybody and welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. I uh, hope everybody's doing well, hope everybody had a good day. So let's talk about it technically and then we will uh, kind of give you uh, some ideas of what to expect uh, for tomorrow. Uh, again, we continue to build uh, below the 50-day moving average. Now this is a full week of trading. Um, I, I think the most important part of what we saw today was number one, we closed, this is the high, cl lowest close in this whole formation here. And the most disturbing thing, if you are a bull, and again, I don't, I don't wanna you know, make, make it more dramatic than it is, but the, the point is every single time there was a little bit of traction on some of these names to the upside today, they got rejected and they closed, you know, and they, and they closed lower. And the point is when you look at the indexes today, uh, it's really not a big deal at all. You know, you can see a pretty uh, flat uh, session for all the, indexes, all the major benchmarks, but the most important part is uh, we gap lower, we went higher. We went lower, we went higher to close lower, and in the process, this five-day moving average continues to decline as well, and now it's well below uh, the 50-day moving average, and we got rejected off the five-day as well. And the only thing that saved uh, the queues today the technology needs from you know really getting very aggressive they hit the lower bollinger band and kind of bounce the, the key is if they start losing uh this 134 level and get below the bollinger band that's when you're going to see probably much more uh, aggressive uh potential selling when you look at the spy uh again kind of the same thing uh this is the lowest close in this whole formation same thing kind of a carbon copy uh, of the cues we got rejected uh, below the five-day moving average again short-term sentiment and more important is we're continuing to build uh, below the 50-day moving average the, the, you know, the only question is you know what's going to get these things uh, kind of going and uh, obviously uh, we started our earnings season uh, Bank of America kicked off the earnings season uh, today you know not bad right not bad at all again the banks have been despite uh, the potential rising rates that we already are starting to see. Um, you know, you would think these financials would be much better off and much more aggressive in nature, but they're not. Um, you know, they're, they're absolutely not. So financials are not really the guiding light of a potential rebound uh, in equity prices. Uh, tomorrow kicks off uh, the official start for uh, beta earnings. Uh, you have Netflix uh, kicking off tomorrow. Again, as you can see by the last quarter, not a lot of love, right? Not a lot of love in uh, Netflix and chill. So unless they come out with something really, really aggressive, you're probably gonna have another uh, sour quarter uh, in front of you. Uh, IBM also reports, this is the king of missing out on their quarters, although they've been a little bit better uh, the last couple of times. You can see here, this is the last quarter itself. Uh, but the, the big one this week is going to be Tesla, right? We saw uh, some pretty big uh, call buying on anticipation of earnings. We saw uh, the weekly 1050s, the 1060s, and even the 1100 calls ahead of their Wednesday after the close uh, release. The other, and then you could see, look how tight this channel is. Uh, obviously, it's either going to break above this channel. I don't know if it's gonna be pre-earnings or not, or below this channel pre-earnings or not, but the point is these levels are still valid even when they do uh, come out with their uh, latest uh, quarterly release. But the key is continuation of this build below the moving averages. Uh, there's a lot of names that are still, you know, sucking wind. You know, we, we, we talked about, uh, again, the value uh, to the downside on, on the weekend update. We talked about snow. Right, we talked about snow to the downside, um, which you know had a pretty big move down. Um, yeah, I'll tell you one thing: this rig continues to be nice. This is what our day three, four in the trade, starting to be nice. You know, it, it traded today into the mid 480s. Um, you know, I think there's a shot sees the 490s. Uh, the key is if it could just now get above this uh, 490 level on a close, maybe goes back to this 556 highs 
from uh, March the 8th. But again, nice little move. So far, nice little three, four day move on uh, a rig. Um, you know, pretty, pretty solid day. You had a lot of... Um, you had a lot of names that uh, you know broke down in the morning, kind of reversed uh, course uh, in the afternoon. Square we talked about in the weekend video. You know, got below the 50-day moving average. Not a huge move. Only went down a couple of bucks. That lower Bollinger Band kind of saved it. Uh, the one of the bigger ones today was this Disney man. Disney got smoked. I mean, absolutely smoked. We'll, we'll get to the individual pivots in a second, but you, you kind of see that the the big individual value continues to be. Uh, to the downside, even even some strength today. When you saw, you know, so you look at the semiconductors and you turn around today and you said, "Well, the semis are strong today." I mean, look at the. I mean, look at them. Are they really strong? Can we really still say the word semiconductors are strong? They didn't even take out the previous day's high. Again, if the SMH is going from 284, right, from 284 to 237, can you really turn around at 242 and say, "Wow, they're 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 really strong today"? Probably not. So that's kind of my point. There's a lot of names that even if they have up days, they're kind of going into supply or there's just not enough room. Like for example, NVIDIA, nonstop call buying, nonstop call buying, nonstop call buying. All this damn thing has done is rally to the five day moving average, just like uh, just like the Qs and you know they got rejected. Couldn't even take out the previous uh, previous day's high. So be, and, until the most, the most basic thing is for, for a stock or an ETF or anything to rally, the most basic thing in technical analysis, they at least have to take out the previous day's highs first. And we're just not getting that anywhere, literally anywhere uh, across the board in uh, any technology shares. Are the oils uh, doing well? Absolutely. Oils are, are, are going higher. I mean, look at, look at the, you know, the, the price of the pump. You don't even need to look at charts to figure that part out. But again, if your game is technology and I am pretty much 99.9% .9 technology, um, you know, it, it really is value continues to be uh, to the downside. So let's, you know, let's talk about, uh, you know, the, the only thing I could possibly, the only thing I could possibly think of, you know, if, if these, if they come out with some great numbers, Netflix, kind of sets the tone and Tesla follows through. And then you got Apple and Amazon and, and, and Facebook and Google uh, and Microsoft. You know, yeah, of course they could save, you know, they, they could save the tech space just like that on a moment's notice and reclaim not only the five day moving average, but reclaim the 50 and have a powerful rally uh, going into the second quarter. But again, you can't predict that to happen. You can't, nobody's gonna guess uh, to be that way. So that's, it is what it is. So let's talk about today's session. Uh, Amazon never got down to the 29.90. This is still uh, very, very valid. Uh, STT we talked about on the weekend update. Again, when you see a stock, you know, blow up on earnings, there's a, there's a high probability it's going to have a day two decline. Uh, 75, 50, 75. If it builds below, it can flush. This is supposed to be Thursday's move. Friday we were off. Here was uh, STT, right? So it had that uh, day one, uh, day one earnings. It took out the 75, 70. Excuse me, 70. Uh, 75, 74 area traded all the way down to 72. Uh, nice move there on STT. Uh, Apple held 65 twice, not a big move down. Uh, went down to like 63 and changed pre-mark and then it kind of hovered around the, the, the 65 level all day. Uh, Square 119.50 needs to build. If it builds below, it can start a multiple day. I mean, it went down to like 1587. But it traded kind of funky. I mean, for all you guys who took the trade with me, it, it traded really funky. It got down to like 17 and then balanced and went down to like 16 and then balanced and then went down to 1587 and then balanced. It was like all over the place. But again, one more day. I think it needs one more day uh, to get down below this uh, this Bollinger band, band here. You could get a bigger move uh, lower. But again, it is what it is. Let that be a worse problem. Uh, NVIDIA uh, made an initial move to 1090, 1079, never gave a second entry. Uh, Target, I think we talked about Target on the weekend update as well. Uh, 238.20 uh, needs to build. Target had a nice move, really, really nice move here. So here was Target, took out the 38.20, went to 41.26. Nice move there on Target. Uh, Disney got destroyed. I, I don't think I remember and it's not like the Dow is down 500 points. Uh, Disney, I, I don't remember Disney going down so smooth without even an uptick. It felt like there was a li liquidation going on at one point. Uh, 130 held several times daily. If it builds below, can flush at 130. Here was Disney. And you know, check out the intraday charts. Here's the daily chart held 134 times. But look, look what happened here on the, on the intraday chart. So here was the 130 level, right? So it takes out 130, just sits there. Wait, hang out right here. It is right here. Right, so it takes out the 130 level and just you know, sits around 129 and a half, 129.40, and then this candle came and just 
took it all the way down to 126 and change. So really good move uh, on Disney. Good job for you guys who caught that as well. And I believe that is it. Tesla, you know, I'm gonna watch Tesla for tomorrow. I think if they're gonna run Tesla at all, it's gonna be the day, uh, a day uh, right before earnings. I wanna keep an eye on it, if they, especially if they start buying weakness uh, into the morning 60 minute support. Um, here comes Disney, first support is 2780s, went down to 126 and change. Uh, and that's it. So, you know, I, I think the theme continues uh, for tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to watch for additional weaker names. Uh, let me give you guys some names uh, that I am watching for uh, tomorrow's session. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, uh, I like Fastenal. Check out Fastenal. Uh, first move here below the 50 day moving average. And Fastenal confirms this channel below the 50 day. Obviously, that 50 day is important. Uh, could get hit. Uh, NET looks pretty good as well. It's again, it's holding on to dear life on this 50 day moving average. This thing starts losing the bottom of the channel here. Uh, can start its next move down. Uh, Dash, right? DoorDash, which I've been recently using. Same thing, right? It's been kind of holding on to the 50 day moving average. I think if it starts building below and the market continues uh, to get weaker, I think it goes as well. So the, the key is, again, let the technicals give you, right? Let the technicals give you that green light to buy stocks. We saw today, and we've had this conversation in nausea, every single time the market goes up while we're still on the supply. Yeah, these stocks are moving up, but they're not going higher. And as you could tell, you know, half hour, 45 minutes, two hours later, the market goes red. And it's been doing that now for like five days in a row. And again, the longer we build below the 50 day moving average, the higher probability we're gonna get one of these again, and 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 one of these again, because again, it's building a base. And the last thing the bulls wanna do is start building a base underneath supply. So guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless. Have an awesome, awesome night. Have a great trading day tomorrow. With God's help, I'll see you all there. Take